Hey everybody, welcome to Local Business Hacks Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Case, and I'm on a mission to help you. Every week we're gonna be talking to local business owners and experts to get their best tips, tricks, and hacks to grow your business. This show's designed to teach you, inspire you, and motivate you to take massive action and start to build your future-proof business. Whether you're just starting off or you're taking your existing business to the next level, this episode is for you. So let's get started. Hey, local business hackers. I'm your host, director of global business dev at Referizer, and I am super excited to bring a product to our show this morning. Jeff Hewling, CEO and co-founder at Core First. Jeff, welcome to Local Business Hacks, my man. Carl, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited. I am too. I know that you have one of the most unique journeys as far as coming into this space and dabbling in the business world. Give us a little teaser as far as you know who you are and why on earth people are going to listen to you for the next 30 minutes and turn your volume up, people. Uh, yeah, thanks. Awesome, Carl. Well, I, I think it started kind of how a lot of business owners start is they're doing the towels or at the front desk, they're taking calls, they're cleaning equipment. And I worked my way up. I I watched your YouTube and similar to you, you were hungry. That wasn't enough. And so, you know, I I became a trainer, got behind a program desk, started creating programs, and then eventually stepped out of the club and started doing corporate wellness. So I was in California creating programs for Silicon Valley got into the manufacturing business. So I started working with companies like Espresso Fitness and whatnot. And then a little side kind of tangent that was happening at the same time. I did martial arts. I, Carl, I got beat up on the, like the playground in the eighth grade. My mom enrolled me in martial arts. It was one of the best things that happened to me because that led me on to meeting one of my uh, most amazing friends and business partners, Pete Holman. So what was great about this, all these things kind of coming to a crossroads at once. I was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was pretty lost from a business perspective. I lost in Taekwondo matches for three years straight. It was kind of a train wreck, but my parents, they, one was a licensed clinical social worker. One was a rocket scientist, aeronautical engineer. And they taught me something pretty uh, beautiful, which is to, to look for ways that things could be better. And how do you bring people together? to to elevate the tide for everyone, right? So uh, we were unfortunately at a funeral with Pete Holman, my business partner. But at the time, that was just a US Taekwondo team. We were at a funeral and he goes to the back of his trunk. I asked him what he was working on and he pulls out this wooden stick, right? And it had a bungee cord attached to it. I know. And I was like, here we go. What do you, what's the <laughs> idea you got now? And he's like, no, seriously. I, I have these X Games athletes that really need, they're falling apart. They have injuries all over the place because they're not training and rotation. And so I said, hey, TRX is doing this with a, a suspension strap. Why don't we kind of mirror that business and create something around this? So long story short, Carl, we ended up selling our company to TRX and rip training product to TRX. And then it, that kind of started a new chapter of my life of looking for ways that things could be improved in the world so that people could find their ultimate best life and have a life that they don't regret. So we went on to co-create the Nautilus Glute Drive, which is a a hip thrust that's plate loaded and Nautilus licensed that from us. And then, and to kind of pull us to where we are today, after I left that, I met this guy named Donovan Stone and he has an amazing story had cancer when he was 15, shouldn't have lived. Like only 17 cases made it through this. So it's like the equivalent of being struck by lightning like 15 times a day is his chances of living. So, but he has a unique perspective on life. And when I met him, he shared with me a story, which is like, he wanted to help people find their inner strength, whether it's physical or their why. And he noticed that just like Shark Tank, a common thing that was happening is people were defaulting in their movement to grip and not really their core. And so he went to a fabric store and engineered something to have people let go and start to move from their core first, which is kind of where the name of this company came. So when I met him, I said, taking kind of the RIP training and some of the previous experience, let's turn this into a household product. And the rest is kind of history. So it's been an amazing journey. We started in the garage again, that kind of same thing, just like Steve Jobs. But instead of electronics, it was, you know, people kidding and assembling stuff and sitting out. And now we're a multi-million dollar business. So it's been a fun journey. 
Congrats on the adventure and thank you for shrinking all of this knowledge and expertise <laughs> into just two minutes. Definitely a challenge in itself. Jeff, I, I know that, and, and for those of you listening that have taken Pilates classes, in order for you to have Pilates at home, you're looking at a multi-thousand dollar investment, let alone how do you utilize this reformer and everything else. And I think that's one of the coolest things about Core First is that you guys have not only shrunken that investment down to pennies, in my opinion, but you get the, the trainer right in front of your face on your own device. So I'd love to give you an opportunity to speak to our listeners as to why Core First is truly unique in this in this home building core space and how can people get involved? Yeah, thanks. So it's funny, we started right before COVID hit and we launched and it was actually a kind of a blessing because everyone was home, right? And they needed something in their home. But no one really was like walking around with an aching problem of needing like a bungee cord that you can let go of. You know, that's not like a pressing need that people wake their head comes off the pillow and says. (laughs) So what was amazing, we kind of did what I think a lot of first, you know, business people do is we, we, what can it do? So it was a great stretching tool, one of the best assisted stretching tools. So we did stretching programs. It was a great strength training tool because it really helped engage the core first and it was an amazing metabolic cardiovascular. So Carl, we did it all. We were like, this is one of the best one-stop shop tools. The first year we were working with trainers that were now in their home and trying to work remotely. But this is one of the first hacks because this show's about hacks is like our ego, you know, was like, we got this under control. We know what this does well. And we weren't really listening to our customers. So we listened to our advisory board. We had this whole yoga program that you could do with yoga that's assisted and resisted. We were going to go to market and we thought it was the most amazing thing. And they asked us a powerful question, which is what is problem is this solving? What is it doing really well? And to your point, if when we started to look at Instagram, our, our customers were saying, this is the best portable, affordable reformer resistance Pilates system that there is in the world. And now we just need some people to help us figure out how to do this in our homes. So we shifted everything, Carl, to this business model, which was really hard to let go of all the other things that it did really well. And now that's what shifted this, the, the revenues like a hockey stick. So pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. And for people wanting to to see this product for the first time, corefirstpilates.com is the best way. Yep, absolutely. Yep, you awesome. got it. So you brought up a bunch of points here that I'd love to elaborate on. And one of them, so importantly, when it comes to listening to your customers, we've been a product-led company for a long time. And I would say about four years ago, Referizer made a shift to being a customer-led product. And since then, we've grown exponentially with brands like Exponential Fitness and a handful of all the major fitness brands. How does that feel? And how do you really listen or know who to listen to? Or is it just that it came in the masses and you guys were like, we can't ignore this? What was that ultimate shift of we need to pick one lane and stay in that lane? And now, obviously, the numbers agree. Yeah, I think you said it very well when you were doing an interview of yourself was that you really listened to what the customers wanted and needed. And I I think that you also cultivated a group of people that were maybe a little bit ahead of you in experience and you created your group, your community, which is essentially what Referizer is, right? It's like a, a collaboration or community that's an accelerator for people. And I love that concept of growing like five years in a single year. One of the the things that I think back to this point is that I love the V formation the analogy. I'm sure a lot of people know it. There's a lot of cool nuances of it. But the the metaphor that I love is when these, these geese fly in V formation from Canada, if a goose flew alone, they'd end up in the middle of Nebraska because of their fatigue, which is an amazing metaphor for business. But a lot of people, because of their gusto and their experience, that's what they do. And they think they have to have all the answers and they, it comes down to them. But when you fly in a V formation, because of the wind efficiency and rotating in formation and encouraging each other, they end up in like Galveston, Texas on the beach and these sunsets and beautiful water, which is another amazing business metaphor. So I think it's being dedicated to, yes, you're a captain of the ship. But you have to make sure that you're stepping back from that lead and having other people guide the the flock or else you're going to end up in tornado country. (laughs) 
Yeah, and poor geese that haven't discovered South Florida yet, but um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'd love to drill a little deeper if it's okay. If there was an aha moment that really there was just 10,000 DMs coming in, hey, I'm using this for Pilates. Can you support me further with more online classes? Or what was that shift? Because I, I work with brands that do everything in the fitness space from recovery to hit workout to personal training to group fitness. And they're spread so thin that me as an advisor is almost useless. And if they have a hundred customers come at them, they're not listening. So I'd love to learn and, and let the people on our show learn, like, what is that moment or how do you do that? Maybe it's polling your customers. How are you using it? And just really understanding what are ways that we can make that shift and know that it aligns with our clients. Yeah. Well, I think you at Referizer have done it amazingly. Like you've created a forum essentially of with this interview too. And you bring all of these people together that share ideas. And every guest I've listened to, a lot of them can save people years of trying to figure it out on their own, right? One of my mentors is Sir Richard Branson, and he has 200 plus businesses under his brand, $20 billion. What I notice is he stills on the water by 2 p.m. He's up playing tennis, like you said, 5, 6 a.m. You know, a lot of us have one business and we're like, I can barely hang on. How does he do this with 200? And one powerful thing is like, one, work yourself out of a business. But one thing I noticed that he does really well is he creates these forum groups and he has like five or six of them. And he hears from the best of the best how to accelerate in the area of purpose. So when I worked with TRX and had thousands and thousands of businesses that I was consulting with, I would bring franchisees together on a topic and we'd say like, all right, what is one hack around this thing that you had to painfully learn that you can save everybody else from? And when you have five or six people that are best in class with sharing their best practices, oh my gosh, you can literally do what some businesses do in one year that they take 10 years to do. So I love that rule of 33s, which is dedicate 33% of your time to people ahead of you. And do you put it on your calendar? Do you like think about, all right, what are the top 33 people in my life about marriage, about their personal finances, about their franchise? Who are the best operators? And am I setting them into my calendar for lunch so that I can ask them these questions on a regular basis? You know, And a lot of us don't do it. And I'm guilty of it too. I get busy and get sucked in. And then I haven't done my upper 33 for a while. <laughs> so i got to make some calls. I love that. Something that I've done is I have scheduled calls every Thursday and Friday with I call them my savages, like every brand president and real mover and shaker that are in my circle. And the things that I get from those meetings and that they get in return, I just finished Tony Robbins Life Mastery. I got almost everybody in my circle doing celery juice cleanses in the morning. Yeah. And it's, nice. I'm getting texts, Carl, I, look at me. I feel incredible. I have this glow. And whether it's personal or business, we stand to learn so much from each other. And especially in the space that you and I are in and everyone listening to this show mainly is in health, wellness, fitness, and a little bit of beauty. We're all invested in driving results aesthetically, physically, right. emotionally. So we're surrounded in this community around a bunch of people that are investing in learning and testing ourselves because I could read something online, but when I see the guy that was 80 pounds overweight now looking better than me, I'm like, what did you do? Listen to these people. I, I love that 33 rule. Thank you. Yeah. It's amazing. Hell yeah. Jeff, outside of core first and ultimately, I think anybody listening, seriously, go to corefirstpilates.com and grab somebody that you care about that is scared to go into a Pilates studio or try a workout at a gym or whatever it may be and, and give it a try. I, I'd love to open the floor as far as more stories of yours that really shaped when you paid an idiot tax or whatever it may be that you're like, you guys got to listen to this. I promise it's a winner. Yeah. It's so fun. I think that when I was consulting with franchisees and I looked at starting them myself, and I saw thousands and thousands. I got a good sample of what challenges are, right? You have competition down the street. You're trying to get people in. You're trying to differentiate yourself. You're competing with online solutions. And it's really hard. And so when you ask yourself, well, how do I stand out? The first answer we already took care of is like, who are the top people that are doing it and get lunch scheduled? But then next is, I love the book Zero to One by Peter Thiel because it looks at like, 
what is the biggest thing in your industry that you disagree with the most? And I love that. Like, what have we accepted that we shouldn't be tolerating? And think crazy, right? Think out of the box. Pilates is one of the most amazing art forms of movement, most disciplined. If you Google celebrities and athletes that do Pilates, it's LeBron James, Tiger Woods, all of across the board, Lady Gaga. It's not just women. It's almost just as many men at the top. But the accessibility of it is near impossible. So you're a franchise. You don't have the room to have six reformers in a studio, the space, the time, the money, the instructors, all that. So one thing that we're trying to bring to franchisees they can do different is pop up Pilates inspired workouts where you take a common room and you pop up a uh, resistance off of either the balance bars or other anchors in the place. You run people through a beautifully orchestrated re um, reformer inspired type class. You take it down and in two minutes, it's a multi-purpose room. Pretty special. And by the way, the product is like you said, you can get it for under hundred bucks starting. So now you also have a tool. If you have some members that have moved away out of town or some that can't make it in, a tool that you can sell to them and do online training with them and expand the business beyond their four walls. So I love to look at like, how can you do one thing that creates a movement that's different than what everybody else is doing? And this is, that's what I try to do, you know, coming from all those franchisees, the business that I started is like, we want to come up with a tool and a program and education that makes the, cus the customers go, wow. And in a lot of our studios, the members are saying, this is one of the coolest program that, that I've ever done. So it's pretty neat. And then when they're on vacation, they're taking selfies and sending it to the studio and saying, look, I'm doing what you taught me. And then they're rushing back in on Monday to try to, to learn more. So it's pretty fun. So I would say start making a list of what types of things you can do to really shake things up and disturb the market. And let's think outside the box because there's so much we can do beyond standard programming. Because if we do the same thing that everybody's doing, then the customers are probably going to default to other options pretty quickly. I, I just want to elaborate a little further from my own personal opinion on what you said. And everybody on this show that owns a group fitness studio or a hit class or even a personal training gym, very rarely do they ever touch on your core. And I'm a built human. My my arms are, I, I'm happy, my legs, but I've been in Pilates now four days a week for the last six months. And I've, it's still like my first day, maybe like my third day, because I'm, I'm not as clueless when the teacher tells me what to do of what to do, but I'm weak. My core is weak. And what's wild is I've been a, a member of Orange Theory, F45, and all of our clients, and nobody touches on core and people are looking for that. And now you have your stretching modalities coming in big time with stretch zone, stretch lab, stretch med, all these stretching franchises, but still nobody's focusing on the core. So for those of you listening that have these busy class times at 6, 7 a.m., chances are that half of those classes, especially when we get into kickboxing modalities that are tearing towards your average, you know, middle-aged mom that has extra time left, how do you use your four walls that you're still paying rent for, whether there's a trainer there or not, that to, to enable your members to accomplish their goals and maybe things that they didn't even need or to think that they knew that they need. So this is an amazing solution for that. That's I, I was the biggest stereotype person. My girlfriend and her mother were trying to get me to go to Pilates. I'm like, no, I'm going to get a real workout. I'm going to go do weights. Let me know how it goes after. They finally talked me into it. And I went and did it. And I was like you, Carl, I was like, I couldn't walk for like a day. I couldn't believe the muscles that hit the core amazing. And I started talking to people in her class, the instructor's class, and they all said the same thing. Like it saved my back pains. I've never had core like I've ever, like before my mobility has gone up. And I started looking into the history. Joseph Pilates created this a hundred years ago. And so, but the problem, as you started this conversation out, what do you have to do to get to, to do this amazing, beautiful art form, right? You have to drive to a studio. You have to like work up the courage to be on this torture machine in front of a bunch of other people. And, and uh, we all know the cost of Pilates classes are, are very high. Or if you don't want to deal with all of that exposure, you have to buy a $5,000 machine for your house. And then you still have to figure out how to use the freaking thing, right? So the barrier to entry, this is the zero to one. 
I'm, I am not going to accept that this beautiful art form is going to be that hard to get. So our mission is to democratize a quality studio experience in the, wherever people are, anywhere, and make it available to everyone so that they can experience this. So to your to your point, I mean, I... I want to break the taboo. 70% of the people that were doing Pilates in Joseph's class were men. And nobody knows that. It was just because it was next to a dance studio and the dancers took over. And then it became the stereotype that it is. It's like for rich, white, old women, <laughs> to be honest. And it's there's some beauty there. And I'm humbled. I wish I look back and like, why did it, why was I, I'm in the fitness industry for 30 years and look at myself and the stereotype I had about having to throw weights around. So we want to reshape the world's opinion about this beautiful, this art form. So that's our way of standing out and being bold and audacious and going for it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Make some money, people. Go, yeah. go make your, and make your members happy. That's driving results is why we're all in this game. I don't think we work with anybody that's not really in it. See these amazing case studies and testimonials come out of their studios. Jeff, talk to me personally. Give me some books. What are your must read? Zero to one. Definite. Yeah. I love that book. Holy moly. Well, I like Shoe Dog, of course, by Phil Knight. And the reason I like it, because... I've heard many of your speakers talk about this, the road to success is this plate of spaghetti kind of thing. But if you want to feel good about you're not alone in challenges and struggles, that's a great book to reread and read again and again. And because it's like even a decabillion dollar company that everybody just accepts is the most, they didn't know. Most people don't know that he was barely making payroll 14 years into it. Everybody right. thinks it's just like, a piece of cake, had amazing brand. And most 90% of the pages are filled with, oh crap moments. What are we going to do? We're almost bankrupt. And it's very encouraging. So I love that book. It's just for different seasons, different books that encourage and remind you of different things. And Contagious is amazing. Like how do you make a, a Philly cheesesteak sandwich stand out in an area where they're on every single block? Just like the very great metaphor for our franchisees, you know, how do you stand out? And they talk about things like, go the other direction, have a hundred dollar cheese stick sandwich, and then make people ask the question, what the heck is, is this thing made out of gold? Like what? And then of course, everyone's in line around the block for, <laughs> they're buying the regular cheese steaks, but they want to see what this hundred dollar one's all. So uh, like, I, I love, I love stuff like that is like, how do you disrupt the thinking and let's think outside the box and do something that causes people pause? Cause when our attention spans move down now because of social media to three seconds, we got to be starting with something pretty unique, you know? So. Thank you for those. Shoe Dog is a great one. Phil Knight. What a, <laughs> what a, what a beast. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing story. It's fun. I, I think that I, I've like you kind of started to read more books. I really like what you're doing with this podcast. And it's awesome because your software for your company is trying to create efficiency and help people save a lot of time and, and uh, idiot tax, as you say. Uh, books are books are the exact same thing, but I love that you're doing forum because it's a living, breathing version of the books. And like those two together, like look out, people are getting up at 5 a.m. and reading the book and then meeting people that are raising the bar. You're, it's going to be pretty tough to not succeed. <laughs> All right. You triggered me. 5 a.m. Talk to me about your morning routine, <laughs> my man. Uh, I do not get up at 5 a.m., um, but I, the smile. No, I'm just I, kidding. Yeah. I, I am just, my big driver is I want to reverse engineer life, uh, end of life memories, uh, joyous memories. It used to be eradicate deathbed regrets, but that's a negative kind of thing to it. So the thing that gets me up in the morning, I think you got to move, right? I love, I, in martial arts, one of the tenants were cold baths and showers and get up early. All these things are, I think, marquees of, uh, I, but there, and a lot of the historians, you see the charts of them getting up at three or four or 5 a.m. And I think that's amazing. But I think you could get up late later, too, um, as long as you have those discipline, you know, areas. I like how you said you frame up your day. What do you want to accomplish? Make sure you stay focused. Those types of things. I get up. I do something called coffee and strings. I play a little guitar and drink my coffee and it makes me 
kind of wake up in the morning. That's one of mine. And then okay. I try to do every day a little bit. And then I have a dry erase board. I always look at and I'm like, is there someone that's doing what I want to do in an area of my business that I can talk to today? Because that always is a default anchor to lifting the standard up. So that's was what, what I say is the kind of default uh, routines. <laughs> Take your body. Come on. Let's Take get your body. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Jeff, let's wrap up on the question of the year. I think I've had 50 guests on this show that want to have dinner with someone that you've had dinner with. A- everybody's looking to have dinner with Mr. Musk himself. <laughs> so before we ask the question, how was dinner and how's the really like you're friends with Elon? Talk to us a little bit about things that we can't read or see about this beast of a man that all of our guests want to have dinner with. I So I was on Necker Island. I got a chance for a week to have like sit down. And so it was like four dinners to chat. And one of the biggest thing I did feel like it was different, a different, almost like a Benjamin Franklin that I, you know, kind of think different. It's back to what we've been talking about. Now, Grant, he's super focused. And even some of his ex-partners have t- done TED Talks about how much they had, uh, are blown away by his ability to focus and to just say no to even $10 million opportunities plus to stay on the, the goal to change the world for better. And I, I really like that. But I asked him about like, how was it when you were little and he talked, you know, about creating, he wanted to play a video game. So he, you know, created the hardware, soldered it together, wrote the software. And then he was like eight or nine years old playing his video, video game that he created on the hardware and software. So that right there just is kind of, I said, what are the three big things you wanted to do? And, you know, he's like, oh, I want to change the way currency operates on a digital platform. I want to get rid of cars with gasoline, fossil fuel cars and make it all electric. And I want to, I want to back up the human race basically by having life on another planet and having those types of conversations is just like, it reminded me when I came home is like, am I thinking big enough? And am I trying to reshape like Abraham Lincoln is the guy that I'd want to have uh, dinner with because imagine trying to reshape the entire global accepted way of living back then and to have people dying around you and your wife having some mental illness stuff and trying again to get office and failing and failing and failing and then being didn't know it as one of the most amazing presidents of all time. I would ask him one of the key questions is like, what f- fueled you to try to end slavery? And what were the types of like big, hairy, audacious goals? That's the stuff that that I'm that I love to look ask questions for and, and mentors, you know. So that's my answer. <laughs> that's awesome. Jeff, from myself, our listeners all over the globe, we appreciate you. I appreciate you guys listening to this podcast every week. It's definitely my highlight of the week getting to talk to people like Jeff. But thank you for for continuing to break the surface and allow people to experience things on their own terms. And that is a really, really awesome, awesome task that you've set out to accomplish. So corefirstpilates.com people. Jeff, what's the best way to stay connected with you for our listeners? Yeah, well, you can you can always email us at info at corefirstpilates.com or DM us on our Instagram, which is corefirstpilates. You'll find us just, we have contacts information on our website too at corefirstpilates.com. So all of those work great. Happy to even give my phone number if people want to call me directly and ask questions. So I, I love anybody that's trying to shape shift the world and inspire others to, to find their best life. So let's, let's do it together. Thanks, Jeff. See you soon, my man. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to head over to our site, local-business-hacks.com to check out the show notes and send me questions or ideas for future episodes. If you want to grow your business, just like the people you've heard from here, follow Local Business Hacks podcast and tune in for new tips, tricks, and tactics. Until next time, thanks for listening and keep hacking.